the optimism of the outcome isn't motivating enough to do the action. Welcome back to another video. We've been touring, I think, and busy with stuff. I think we've been away for weekends. That's why I've not uh, followed up with the last video um, or a more recent video. My last video was in a hotel in Poundbury. Very nice place. If you've never been, you should go. It's supposedly a city that's designed by the king. Um, it has a bunch of design rules in which you cannot build properties in that area unless you follow the design rules, which is very fascinating. It then makes uh, all the buildings look not aesthetically the same. They're not like copies, but they're motivated f by the same blueprint. So it has that nice stylistic um, consistency. So I, I, I thought it was really cool. But speaking to more like the locals or people outside of the town, they were all like, it's really weird, that town. <laughs> so I'm like, it's funny how one people, uh, a group of people will like it uh, when others won't like it or will be perceived as being weird for liking it. Um, two things that have come to mind, or if, uh, not things as such, but like a category of like content ideas that have come to mind um, around like failure, iteration, and like assumptions and motivation. I've been stuck this week. Um, I need to send, uh, so broadly speaking, I'm very good at building. I'm pretty good at like the vision and building, but I'm not so good at the maintaining or in, a, in other words, I'm great at building stuff, but not good at marketing. Um, so I can do it, but it's just not my forte. Um, and the motivation to carry on doing that is hard when you're always doing the, the vision and the build to begin with. So sometimes I get, um, caught up in like a lack of motivation because we know motivation is the thing that goes up and down. It's the discipline that's the thing that stays steady. However, sometimes I don't have discipline. Therefore I just ride on motivation. I've been needing to reach out to somebody that's engaged with us on the insider side, um, that wants to help out with the kind of the sales marketing esque category, which is great really encouraged when people reach out because it's actually rare for that to happen. So it's amazing when somebody's seen your stuff, likes your stuff, reaches out to want to help out and work with you, which is great. And I've been meaning to uh, message this individual and get back in touch with this individual. Things have happened to get, you get busy. Um, we've been on gigs, we've been away weekends and so forth. And also my motivation hasn't been very high for certain things. So what I tend to do when motivation isn't high for the singular thing, I tend to go off to find another aspect of motivation. So I'll build some side projects. So this side project I built this time was like Paris 2024, the Olympics, the Paralympics are happening this year. So I find that the team GB is made up of many different countries, one of which is Wales, as you may know, uh, if you don't know, I'm Welsh. Um, and I'd love to see the specifically the Welsh athletes and specifically how many medals wealth, uh, wealth, uh, wealth, Welsh, athletes are being awarded so then you could kind of gauge if wales uh, or when wales become independent where would we rank in these like um medal table anyway it's not serious it's just for fun um and i thought i'd build kind of a little side project to show time scale like a, a calendar or a schedule when people are who the individuals are who the athletes that are um in Team GB, a part of like Wales or from Wales or have a, um, like Welsh athletes. Um, so I built that and um, I really like it. I think it'd be cool to extend that to the Paralympic Games because that'd be cool. And um, I really enjoyed doing that. When you push something into the App Store, sometimes they're like, hey, it needs more content. So they came back to me a couple of times. So that kind of like um, is a bit frustrating, but I managed to put enough content in there for me to get it approved, which is great. And sometimes you feel that that, buildup of motivation and positivity is enough now to come back to the original thing that you should be doing. So before I spoke about, um, sometimes the thing you fear is the thing you need to do. And if you don't do it now, you end up coming back to it. So yes, fear can be a driver. Um, but it's also like the motivation. So I've not been, uh, I'm like I was saying before, great at building stuff. Um, great at using the motivation to come back to then the, the thing you should be doing and, and using the motivation. But what happens if that motivation um, isn't the driving force. And I guess it comes down to like a few things. So one, um, when you build stuff, it's great to build stuff, but if you had a thousand apps that nobody used, what's the point? What's the point of building all that stuff? Um, I've always felt that ideas are, 
are, are great, but they're nothing without execution. But then the execution is uh, like the build. The build or the execution is nothing without marketing. Um, so you need those, um, all three of those aspects to to build a successful product base company or a startup of some sorts. And yeah, what's the point of having a thousand apps if um, if none of them are being used? And um, my wife, Kim, she mentioned about the um, film Blackberry. If you've not watched it, you should definitely go and watch it. It's in line with the founder and war dogs and all those kind of like motivational kind of like business hustle type films. And in the film, the, uh, the founder of Blackberry was like the keyboard. Everybody wants a keyboard. So when the iPhone came out without a keyboard, as in a, a tactile thing, that you press buttons on, it had a touch keyboard. He was like, nobody will like that. People want a keyboard. And that assumption essentially drove the business into the ground. And sometimes it's a case of like making sure that your own assumptions based on your experiences are not the thing that drive you to fail because you're not willing to iterate and change even your own understanding or your own assumptions um, on things as well. So it's a case of like, I might have the assumption that I'm okay at marketing or these things will blow up and these things will get off the ground organically or this thing will go viral and so forth. And sometimes it's a case of not baking things on, on your assumption and trying different things, iterating, because otherwise you'll just end up failing. Um, and I think that's something that I want to kind of like carry on doing. So not get fixated on my own understanding and therefore the assumptions that come from my own understanding. So that's one part. And then the second thing I've been thinking about is like, sometimes you have to be honest with the scale of the problem. So the reason why I haven't reached out to this one person, so let's say the to-do list and the to-do app has my line item of email this person to get back in touch. The reason why I've not done it is because I've essentially feared that potentially this person will get involved and say, the app is rubbish or this is a, why haven't you done it this way? So I, I guess fear of critique um, or judgment. And it's funny to think that I've not been honest with myself about that. And that was the reason why I'm putting off the actual small task of getting back in touch. Of course, getting back in touch then expands to like arranging a time and then meeting and preparing stuff to have the conversation. So yeah, there might be the, the wall is actually bigger than you first think. Um, however, I think I was just more honest with myself recently that I thought it was a rabbit and actually it was a bit more like a, a Goliath. Um, and maybe for a rabbit, you'll be like, cool, I need two out of 10 like energy. So let me go build up that two out of 10 energy to then come back and do that task. However, if you're not honest with yourself and the significance of like, or the big deal that it is, uh, whatever task it is, you might go away, not build up enough reserves to come. And then you're not able to do the task because you realize it actually wasn't a rabbit. It was a Goliath and you need 10 out of 10 energy for that. So what you need to do is go away, build up the 10 out of 10 energy or 12 out of 10 or like, like exceed the energy requirements for the task, then tackle the task. And hopefully when you actually come to the task, you realize, oh, it wasn't so bad anyway. Um, like, so for example, if you email somebody, they're not necessarily going to reply instantly. So the task that you were kind of like concerned about, cause like, well, if you engage with this person, they're going to, they might judge you again. Um, it's like negative based on negative assumptions, um, and not truths as it were. Um, so it's like, yeah, you email that person, you then realize, oh, it, what, it, it might've been a Goliath to begin with, but then it'll be a bit of time before they get in touch. And then when they do get in touch, they're like really grateful and appreciative that you're still interested, for example. So I think it's a case of like, being super, super honest with yourself. And I think this week I've been more honest with myself with the difficulty of doing certain tasks purely because of fear of being judged and miscalculating or misassuming, um, assuming incorrectly that the energy required to do that task was less than it was. And then as soon as, I, as, soon as I've done the task, it's easy. It's, it's fine. I'm, I'm back in kind of like a, a good flow as it were. So I think it's just a case of one, be like really honest about why, why do you fear a task? So it might be, you don't want to do that task because it leads to something. So it might be, 
well, actually, if you engage with someone, they might like judge the way that I've coded something. So again, you're triggering all these like, you know, fear of judgment or like um, imposter syndrome. Some be like, what? It's been built like this or like critique something. Or at least that's what is my, in my case. So if you fear something, why are you fearing it? And then just like calculate and be super honest with yourself, the actual energy requirement that it's going to be to, to like overcome that fear. Um, and I think in verbalizing it, it always diminishes the power that that fear has or, or the kind of the blocker that it is. It always becomes smaller as soon as you pull it out of your brain and hold it in front of you. Um, so I think that helps as well. So yeah, those are just some thoughts. And I think um, uh, another thing here is like, um, another thing I wrote in my notes is the optimism of the outcome isn't motivating enough to do the action. So sometimes when you chat to somebody and they can't be bothered to do something, <laughs> you'd be like, but think of the reward or think of the positive thing that's going to result in this outcome. And if you think in a time scale, let's say for argument's sake, okay, you need to email somebody to, to kind of like arrange a time to meet so you can start working together. The optimism of the outcome, which is like, they're going to really enjoy working with you is not motivating enough to want to email them. And I think it's because really what you should do is elongate or like stretch out the journey far beyond just the small interaction and the like the back and forth to be even further. So for example, if in this case, if I was like, the optimism of this moment, that this moment could be a co-founder or it could be like your chief marketing officer, or it could be a, a long-term partnership that sets you up for like really good partnerships, like with artists and stuff in the future. Then this one email becomes much more kind of a significant jump and you're more motivated to do that moment. So not only is it being honest with the fear and the reserved nature of not wanting to do something, it's being honest with the energy levels. And then when you are positively reflecting on the, the optimism or the benefit of this action, make sure you elongate it out to like a, a long-term view rather than just the next goal. Because for example, if I was like, oh, um, this could be a really good email. This could be a real good connection. You realize like, well, it's not moving, motivating enough because I have to email this person. We then have to arrange a time. It might take a bit back and forward. Then I have to do some prep work for it. So there's like these four, five things, six things that I end up building up of to do items that end up clogging up that kind of like motivation, um, motivational like alleyway or flow for me to want to do the simple task of like emailing that person. Um, so yeah, in kind of like summary, just like be super honest with yourself. Be like, um, I think it's what we, what were we saying? Can we say a really good phrase? Just like, ra yeah, radical honesty. Be like radically honest with yourself about the blocker. Like, why do you not want to do that task? Be honest about the energy required to do the task. And then when it look, when you're looking at motivation, um, to kind of like do the action, think about it in a long-term fashion rather than a short-term fashion. And hopefully that would be enough um, to get you over the line and get you swimming again, get you back in the pool, get you back in the, um, back on the track. Again, sport analogies, because I'm being mo motivated by all this Paris 2024 stuff. All right, I think that's it for now. I'll speak to you later. <laughs> We'll be